Things like the Folk Awards. Years ago, the BBC would never have done that. To fly people in from the States, you know, and have this huge two-hour show in, in a big hotel in London to celebrate folk music. It's incredibly healthy. I can't tell you how healthy it is. Uh, I, I'd say we're set up for the next 20 or 30 years. Time now for some more music. Our next guest has been nominated for four awards this evening and has already been given the Horizon Award. His arrangements of traditional songs are genuinely original and I urge anybody who's not yet heard his album, Sweet England, to go out tonight after the show, knock up a music shop and buy a copy. Please welcome Jim Murray. That night, I did a kind of performance art thing with an orchestra made of hedgehogs, squirrels and rabbits and dressed, dressed as a Second World War um, army pilot uh, with a mic stand made out of an, uh, like Darth Vader's light, lightsaber. You know, the, it, was, it was supposed to be a little bit of a prank and everybody took it so seriously. If you make an experimental record, you know, you're, you're, you're gambling. I'd say this genre is, is sensitive, you know, and you've got to be so careful. They might feel like you're, you're turning your back on them, in a way. The first few tables were sitting in their chairs, open mouthed. The people behind them were kind of slightly up a bit, trying to see what was going on. The people behind them were standing, and, and nobody, was, nobody was smiling, nobody was clapping. You have to explore music in the way that you feel is right for you. And if drums and bass is the way you want to take it, well, that's fine. You know, just don't invite me. It's this club that you have to join, and, you, and the way you join is by paying your dues. Do you know the bit in Spinal Tap where um, they're in the back of the, the limousine reading the Sammy Davis Jr. biography, and the limo driver turns around and says, are you reading Yes I Can by Sammy Davis Jr? He says it should be called Yes I Can if Frank Sinatra says it's all right. Folk music's a bit like that. It's, it's Yes I Can if Martin Carthy says it's all right. It strikes me as maybe that scene could do a little with a little bit of artistic kind of traffic coming in and out of it to just uh, keep it flowing because a, a, a music that doesn't change or isn't open to bastardization or hybridization will, will eventually die. I truly believe that there is going to be a proper resurgence of interest in, in folk music. But when that happens, it will be without the previous generation's approval and probably without their knowledge. Um, and there is, there, there's the seeds of that in the kind of things Alistair Roberts is doing. But there's nothing particularly modern about Alistair Roberts' approach. He performs stark and simple arrangements of traditional ballads. The new generation of folk artists, they couldn't have come through the traditional folk clubs. People didn't know about them, which is a real shame. I mean, you get an artist like Alistair Roberts. He's amazing. He's doing folk which is in a really pure form, and yet the traditional folk scene still doesn't know about him. That seems to me that when you get someone who's so good and emerges from that scene, and, and, and the people who are supposed to be the curators of the scene don't know about him, then something's gone badly wrong. Alistair Roberts has been embraced by a new alternative scene, often dubbed twisted or acid folk. This alternative scene is entirely independent of the established folk world. It has its own festivals and concerts and a distinctly indie philosophy. Sometimes 
folk music in general, by definition, is music for the people. It's the idea that anyone can do it, firstly, a kind of punk attitude, if you like. But it's also a music that, a sharing music, that you can definitely get stuff back from what you give. And in that respect, it's right back in the day when folk started, this personal connection between the people and the music being made. You went into your poverty camp and paralytic Oh, oh, VP inside of ha, ha What a hell of a mixture Cause the royal and the orange juice People are there for music. They're not there to be trendy, they're not there to look cool, they're not there to, to discuss whether it's traditional folk or not. They're there for music. The scene operates as a network of small, loosely connected units working independently all over the country. James Yorkston is one of the best-known artists on this scene. He emerged from one of these small independent groups known as the Fence Collective. The Fence Collective run their own lo-fi record label from the sleepy fishing village of Anstruther on the east coast of Scotland. still got a very DIY ethic and there was never any you know aim uh, to be signed or to and because we didn't have that you know that drive we ended up having to set up our own label we have to put on our own shows we have to do everything right from you know from tuning up your guitar right down to you know knocking on shop doors and asking if they'll stock our music yeah, I'd like to think people did see us as folk musicians because we play and we write the songs that are about this area and, and about our lives at this time. I can understand why the new crop of singer-songwriters are called folk singers. I understand that because they write about things that are happening now. It only becomes what I love when it's been passed around through not just one person. This isn't about one person. This isn't pop, pop music. This isn't ego music. This isn't me music. Because traditional music is about thousands of minds. It's not about one mind. I think there is a tendency for people to be slightly militant about what is folk music and what isn't folk music and to dismiss something that doesn't fall into their own bracket. I think it's quite healthy to have an interest in, in, in something quite defined, but it... Um, but it seems to me totally unhelpful to dismiss anybody else's take on it because it, it, why does it matter? From an audience point of view, you know, the fun about being a music listener is the joy of finding a, you know, a Led Zeppelin album with, oh, that, she's a nice singer, who's that? Oh, it's Sandy Denny, she's in Fairport. Oh, Fairport, oh, that's, and that's Steel Ice Band, wow. And, that, and, you know, and it kind of just um, escalates. Four separate generations of the folk revival makes for a far more weighty and varied body of work in the record racks labelled British folk than the original folk revivalists had when they pillaged the field recordings of Cecil Sharp House. Today's pick and mix generation have learned that they can chart their own route back through the archives and can find folk music to suit any kind of lifestyle. I was actually living that life. I was actually going out and dancing. And dance music was going crazy. And I was just a bit like, what are all these people doing? It's mindless. So I was coming home and listening to beautiful songs, you know, Joni Mitchell's Blue Album, After the Gold Rush, Neil Young. I was obsessed with John Martin, especially Solid Air. Then I guess also there was Nick Drake by then as well. You know, I just loved his music. No one is like Nick Drake. Betty came by on the way Said she had a word to say in the mid-90s, there were a lot of um, the, the, the Nick Drake material was reissued. 